Today in our 2008 Saturn Outlook, we'll be installing the Takancha Prodigy P2 brake controller, part number 90885, in conjunction with the ETBC7 7 and 4 way installation kit, part number ETBC7. Our first step will be mounting our new 4 and 7 way plug and mounting bracket. The bracket and attachment hardware comes with the installation kit. Let's go ahead and mount the bracket to the 7 pole. Next, we'll go ahead and mount the 7 pole bracket to the hitch bracket. Again, the hardware is provided with our install kit. Now with the 7 and 4 way secured to the hitch, ready to go ahead and start wiring, attaching to the manufacturers our wiring already supplied with the vehicle. First, I'll simply cut away some of the zip ties securing the four pole connector on the vehicle so that we can connect it to the four pole on our new seven pole plug. We'll also use some dielectric grease, part number 11755, to help prevent corrosion in between the plugs. An added measure to keep the two plugs together, I'll go ahead and take a zip tie to secure them. Go ahead and remove or cut off the purple wire coming from our new seven pole as it will not be used in this application. Now with that done, we'll go ahead and wrap up our wires with some black electrical tape. We'll go ahead and stop there as we'll need to make two more connections. Using the gray duplex wire provided with our install kit, we'll go ahead and strip back a few inches and cut it off. Then we'll go ahead and strip back the wires so that we can make connections with the black and blue wire with the yellow butt connectors pre-attached coming from our seven pole connector. We'll match black to black and the blue to the white. The black will be the power supply going to our seven pole connector and the blue will be the brake signal coming from our brake controller. Now with those connections made, we'll go ahead and finish wrapping up our wires with some black electrical tape. Next, we can go ahead and start securing our wires to the hitch. We'll just be using some black zip ties to secure the wiring. Next, we'll take the white wire with a pre-attached ring terminal and ground it to the frame. This will be the ground for the new four and seven pole plugs. To ground the white wire, we'll simply use a self-tapping screw and attach it directly to the frame. Now to clean up our install look, we'll go ahead and take a pair of side cutters and cut off any excess from the zip ties securing the wire. Now we're ready to go ahead and start routing our wire to the engine compartment. When routing your wires, it's highly recommended to stay away from excessive heat, such as exhaust, or moving components such as a steering or suspension that can harm the wire. As we route our wire, we'll also be securing with the black zip ties. Now that we have the wire routed to the firewall or engine compartment of the vehicle, the white wire will be routed into the cabin. So we'll need to go ahead and find a suitable grommet to route the wire through. So we'll go ahead and remove the lower kick panel on the driver's side. To do this, there are three push pin fasteners that will need to be removed. Now with the fasteners out, we'll go ahead and remove the kick panel and set it aside for reinstallation later. Through the firewall, there's a suitable grommet that will get us to the lower portion of the engine compartment. Now to make a hole through the grommet, we'll go ahead and take our utility knife and cut a hole in the grommet. Then I'm gonna take my screwdriver just to make sure the hole's large enough to get my wire through. Take a piece of air tubing to assist in pulling our wire up into the engine compartment. You could also use a stiff piece of wire in this application. It'll just be a leader or pull wire to assist us in getting through the grommet. Now with my pull wire down below, we can go ahead and take some black electrical tape and tape the white wire to it pulling it into the engine compartment. Now with the wire into the engine compartment, we'll go ahead and cut off the excess. To keep track of my wires, I'll now go ahead and take some blue tape and wrap it around the wire, noting that this wire originates from the seven pole connector, again from the blue wire, which will be the brake signal coming from the brake controller, which will also be a blue wire. Now with the excess cut off, I'm going to take my pull wire and send it back through the grommet, leaving the white wire we just cut off attached. We'll pull this back underneath the vehicle, attach the black wire we just ran from the seven pole connector to the pull wire and run them both to the top of the engine compartment. Now we're ready to go ahead and run the power wire. It'll run from the battery to the brake controller. Again, to route our wire, we'll go ahead and take our red pull wire, feed it in through the grommet. We'll attach our power wire from underneath and pull it into the cabin of the vehicle. Go ahead and remove the pull wire, attach it to the other end of our power wire, and feed it up to the top of the engine compartment. Now we can route it over to the passenger side with the power wire and ground wire we've previously run. 
Now with all our wires run, we're ready to go ahead and start making our connections. We'll first need to determine which wire we will be getting our brake signal from the vehicle. You'll notice over here on the driver's side, there's a tow plug port that is unused. This vehicle is not equipped with a tow package. However, this wire is still hot, as we can see by using our test light and testing it. So we can use this white wire from the tow plug port as our brake signal circuit. It will run to the red wire for the pigtail for our brake controller. Now we'll go back to the wires we routed previously. When we take the white wire with our blue tape, we'll cut off any excess from the white wire. Now we'll go ahead and strip back and use the yellow butt connector. Cut off any excess from the pigtail that'll go to the brake controller as we don't need this much length in our wire. Now we'll go ahead and strip back each end and we're ready to start making our connections. We'll take the blue wire and connect it to the white wire that we indicated is our brake signal circuit for the seven pole and use the yellow butt connector to make the connection. Now we can go ahead and repeat the same process with the black wire from our brake controller pigtail to the black wire that we previously ran through the grommet and the white wire which we ran through the grommet and up to the engine compartment as our ground for the brake controller. With those connections made, we'll go ahead and take some black electric tape and wrap up these three wires. Next, I'll go ahead and wrap up a few inches of our red brake signal wire that we'll be making connection with the white wire from our tow port. Now with that done, to make sure I've got enough wrapped up, we can go ahead and mount the brake controller bracket. We'll use the two screws provided with the install kit. Now with the brake control bracket mounted, we can go ahead and plug into the brake controller and set it into the pocket. Next, we'll go ahead and route the red wire over to the tow port. Here, we'll cut the white wire, strip it back and add a butt connector, and then cut off any excess from our red wire and make connection on the other end of our butt connector. Now we'll go ahead and take some black electrical tape and wrap up this connection point. Now with all the connections made here under the dash, we're ready to go ahead and reinstall the kick panel. Next, we'll go ahead and move back to the engine compartment the wires run over to the passenger side fender. To make a little room to install our breakers, we'll go ahead and remove the ground stud. We'll be mounting the breakers with our install kit here on the side of the inner fender well. Our first breaker we'll mount, we'll, we'll go to the brake controller, will be our 20 amp breaker. The second breaker will be our 40 amp breaker that will lead to the seven pole connector at the back of the vehicle. Now with our breakers mounted, we'll go ahead and cut off the excess from our power wires add ring terminals, and secure them to the breakers with the hardware provided. Next, we'll go ahead and cut off the excess from our white ground wire, add ring terminals, and then we'll slide the ring terminal over the ground stud. Now we need to make two jumpers to go from our breakers to the positive battery terminal. We'll go ahead and take the leftover wire that we cut off previously from our power wires, strip back both ends, and add ring terminals. Attach those to the breakers and then route them over to the positive battery terminal. And now we'll remove the nut securing the positive battery post. Install the two ring terminals and re-secure it with the nut. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the positive battery terminal cover. To clean up our install look, we'll now go ahead and take our side cutters, cut off any excess from the zip ties that we previously installed. And that'll complete the install of the Takancha Prodigy P2 brake controller, part number 90885, in conjunction with the ETB C7 seven and four way installation kit for our 2008 Saturn Outlook.